Welcome to FINA Aquatics World. There's plenty of diving in this month's programme with Olympic hopeful Peter Waterfield showing us his East London roots. In Atlanta, the fastest swimmers in the USA take on Europe in the duel in the pool. But our first stop is Beijing and the FINA Synchro World Trophy. The FINA Synchro World Trophy presents the ballerinas of the aquatics world with a chance to gauge their own form as well as that of many of their would-be opponents come London this summer. One of the stops on the tour, which first saw light back in 2006, was the Olympic host city of 2008, Beijing. Even though the World Trophy has been adapted to make the sport even more spectacular for the general public by using thematic props, the actors are still the same and many of the ladies on show here will almost certainly be in London this summer. One of the strongest nations in the sport is Canada. Genevieve Bellinger and Rachel Frechette took to the water for the Canadians in the thematic duet. Thematic duet also saw the return of 2008 Olympic silver medalist from Spain, Gemma Mengual, back after taking time off following the 2009 FINA World Championships. During that time, she became a mother, and at the age of 34, she is now aiming for London with her partner, Ona Carbonell. Well, a beautiful performance from the Spanish, which resulted in a score of 96.688, and that gave the pairing a silver medal here in the Chinese capital. One of Spain's chief rivals in both the duet and the team event at the Olympics is, of course, Russia, and they were naturally on site. Here, represented by Victoria Anafrieva and Victoria Shestakovich, who is a member of the team that won gold for the Russians at the FINA World Championships in Rome. A relatively newly formed Russian duo performing admirably there, but the score of 96.513 from the judges was only good enough for third place as the local darlings Zhang Jia Wen and Yuan Wanjing stepped into the spotlight.
Well, a sparkling routine there from the Chinese, who are obviously eager to make a statement ahead of London, which they did by winning here in Beijing with a score of 96.751. At home in 2008, China finished just outside the medals in this event, placing fourth. But for the upcoming Olympics, the gauntlet has been thrown down by the Asian nation. So, success for China in the thematic duet, but overall it was Spain that came out on top in Beijing, followed by host China, with Canada in third place. The 2012 10K Marathon Swimming World Cup got underway with two events in South America. Spiridon Giannotis of Greece won both the opener in Santos, Brazil, and then again in Patagonia's Viedma, Argentina. On the women's side, Italy's Martina Grimaldi won the Brazilian event, while Eva Fabian of the USA won in Argentina. One of Great Britain's Olympic diving hopes ahead of London is Peter Waterfield. The 30-year-old Olympic silver medalist from Athens 2004 is more than familiar with East London, where the Olympic Village is situated. And we sent him on a walkabout to take us on a trip down memory lane. So this is where it all started for you? Yeah, yeah, I used to come here, st started at nine years old, started swimming first here and then was watching the divers up the other end and decided it looked more exciting, so had a go at it and yeah, the rest is history I guess. <laughs> Here we are then, back, back in your old pool. Yeah, much? it hasn't, you know, it's, um, you know, the tiles are a little bit different and the seating's a little bit different colour, but no, it's, it's actually the same as when I left. <laughs> Take us back 21 years, a nine-year-old Peter Waterfield, stood on the edge of this board. <coughs> what emotions were going through your mind? I was, um, I, I was scared, I must admit. Um, and then I looked behind me, and I kind of pushed the other kid in front of me to make him go first, <laughs> just so that he could test the water for me. But, um, but no, you know, uh, coming up on things that are high are generally scary. But that's what gives me. Um, the adrenaline and the exhilaration, that's why I keep doing it, because I, I love the feeling of it. And Peter has certainly made a place for himself in British diving history with his collection of medals, which he is proud to show off. Um, this is the Commonwealth Games in 2002 in Manchester. A great event because it was a, a home crowd and stuff, so it's kind of a little taster of what I'm going to get at the Olympics. So, so yeah, I've dived with a home crowd before and um, I like it. <laughs> so, um, this is the Commonwealth Games in Melbourne in 2006. Um, I then, so it was the one after, so I was going to defend my title and came back with silver. So, um, not as good, but not far away. Um, and this one is the Olympic silver from Athens in 2004. Um, me and Leon Taylor uh, won, won this medal in the synchronised event. Uh, yeah, so. That's probably the most special one because it's the Olympic Games. Um, the Olympics is the biggest event in the world, really, sporting events. So, you know, to be a part of it, but not only that, to get a medal in one is, is uh, not many people get to do it. So, yeah, it's a, it's, I feel humbled, you know. And this is the pool I started in. This is where I first started in this pool. So, yeah. How, yeah. how old are you guys? What kind of, what kind of age are you guys? Yeah, and I, I was nine, so I was about your age. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to hand these round? And have all have a feel of them. You've got to be careful with them, though. Let's go this way. The excitement and the adulation that kids show once they realize who Peter is is mirrored by the pride shown by the people he grew up with. Just a stone's throw away from the Olympic Village in London's East End. You all right? How you doing? What do you remember of him when he was younger? Oh yeah, I remember him out in the garden with his mates. Yeah. <laughs> Kicking the ball over my side. Yeah, see, she, she's, their garden, she, their garden was perfect garden, like, it was, it was so nice, and then she, our ball used to come over the top, didn't it? I used to just sit down to dinner, knock at the door, can you get my ball? Yeah, yeah. 
When Peter wasn't indulging in Britain's favorite sport in his back garden, he had other activities that kept him occupied, like greyhound racing. It may not be as popular as it once was, but a night at the dogs with a few friends was something that many young men in this part of the world appreciated. Here it is. So this was your first stadium, if you like? Yeah, yeah, the dog track. Um, used to come here as a kid. Um, there was actually a nightclub when I got a bit older called Charlie Chan's underneath that we used to go to. Yeah, I'd love, you know, I had family that used to work here and, and all sorts of, uh, yeah. Did you so get a buzz out of watching, watching the dogs race? Yeah, it's good fun, isn't it? I, I like watching the old dog racing. Yeah, it's a good night out as well. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, unfortunately it's no longer. The shiny new Olympic Village being erected alongside aging and disused buildings like Walthamstow Stadium are a reminder that the area in which Peter grew up is changing fast. Although he himself is now based on the south coast of England in Southampton, he still keeps a watchful eye on developments in his beloved old neighborhood. Coming up after the break, we'll get to know another British Olympic hopeful, swimmer Gemma Spoffer. We'll look ahead to the upcoming feeder diving World Series and we'll see as the USA and Europe lock horns in the duel in the pool. Welcome back in part two of FINA Aquatics World. There's more diving as we highlight the diving World Series. We also talked to British backstroke world champ Gemma Spofford. But before that, we travel to Atlanta to see how Gemma and her European teammates fared in the duel in the pool. The 2011 duel in the pool, with its 150,000 US dollars in prize money, showcased some of the best swimmers in the world. The meet took place at the Georgia Tech Aquatic Center, where America's top swimmers took on a combined team of European all-stars. A world record and a number of national records were set in the two-day event which featured American Olympic gold medalists Ryan Lochte, Natalie Coughlin, Rebecca Sony, and Dana Volma. Among the European stars were Denmark's Lotte Fries, Marlin Feldhuis of the Netherlands and Britain Fran Halsall to name a few. It wouldn't take long for the US to set the standard with a world record being set in the opening event of the meet, the women's 4x100 medley relay featuring Coughlin, Sony, Volma and Franklin. Watch your clothes like a freight train here. They all know the world record's in their grasp. They're going to do it. It was set for the last of the old suit records back in December of 09 in Manchester, and Missy Franklin is going to put up a world record to start this duel on the pool. The time of 3 minutes 47.56 was almost half a second faster than their previous record set in Manchester in 2009. The men's 400 meter individual medley would provide an entertaining race featuring the current European record holder Laszlo Cher of Hungary and the world record holder Ryan Lochte, Austrian veteran Dinko Jukic and home swimmer Tyler Clary. Watch his kick. See how much further he gets? Oh, he gets so much further and then he's got that quick kick behind him. Lochte feeding off the crowd here where he is clearly the crowd favorite. And now he just loafs it home, eases it in ahead of Clary. In what is considered one of the toughest events on the program, locked to reign supreme, securing the five points for his nation. Tyler Clary made it a one-two for the Americans, whilst Cher had to make do with a third place. The American women would dominate proceedings in the 200 free, led by teenage sensation Missy Franklin. Dutch star Renomi Kromi with Jojo started brilliantly, touching ahead of Franklin at the 50 meter split and was still in touch at the 100. She could win multiple medals in London in 2012 and showing everybody here that she has come to swim. Look at this, the Americans are vying to go one, two, three here. So Franklin's going to win it in lane four, down in lane six. Fulmer looking good as well, trying to get to the wall. Franklin wins it. Well, Franklin timed her finish to perfection and speared home to win the race comfortably in a time of 1 minute 53.19. Dana Volmer touched for the silver, and Katie Hoff would make it a whitewash for the hosts, securing all the points on offer. 
The European women would have their turn to shine in the freestyle sprint with the Dutch pair, Kromer with Jojo and Marlin Felhuis shaking things up in the water. Watch Kromer with Jojo. Bulmer sitting out, getting ready for the relay at the end of this competition. Well, you see how long Kromo with Jojo spin underwater? She really does such a great job with that dolphin kick. In a flurry of water, remember, it's just two lengths of the pool, 25 meters. And down there in lane five is Kromo with Jojo looking good. Lane three, Veldhaus coming on. And it's very tight to the finish, but Veldhaus is able to hold on, and it's a Euro sweep. Well, the rivalry between the two has been intense throughout the season, with both swimmers claiming stage victories in the same event throughout the FINA Arena World Cup Series. This time, Marlin Feldhuis stopped the clock at 23.43. Kromi Wajojo took second in 23.61, whilst Britain Fran Halsall took third in 23.71 seconds. In the women's 4x100 freestyle relay, the Europeans posted a time of 3 minutes 27.53 to win. A time which, if set by a national squad, would go down in history as the fastest ever. However, as it was a combined effort by European nations, it will not be recorded as an official world record. Way out ahead is Corvo Vigilio of the Netherlands as Messi Franklin is desperately trying to create some sort of magical finish here, but it's not going to happen. I, I don't think it's going to happen, but they can still break the world record. This is one country, but it's getting away from her too. So the quartet from Europe is ahead of the world record, not why, but it's not a world record. In the end, it will be the host nation celebrating the dual victory after accumulating a total score of 181.5 points from the 30 events. The Europeans were left trailing on 80.5 points. Great Britain's Gemma Spofforth was one of the Europeans dueling in the pool. But the 100-meter backstroke world champion and world record holder had little success in Atlanta, finishing sixth in her favorite event. She'll aim to improve on that in London this summer. Spofforth is one of the most talented swimmers her country has ever seen. Today she lives and trains in Florida where she hones her skills for future races and enjoys life both in and out of the water. Spofforth, who was born in Shoreham by Sea in England, had all the necessary prerequisites to become a world-class swimmer and found out early in her life that she had the talent needed to succeed. The 186-centimeter tall Brit has always been physically ahead for her age, which quickly helped her in the pool. I think when I was about seven to nine, that was kind of when I started realizing I was relatively good at the sport. Um, when I was three, I looked old enough to be five, so my parents put me in the five-year-old group. So I, I sort of went on from there and, and, I, and was encouraged just to go swimming. And, and my parents saw that I had a talent and it just went from there, really. Gemma overcame pancreatitis in 2005, and after taking a year out of the water, she remained undecided when it came to her burgeoning swimming career. The illness affected her digestive system to such an extent that she thought about retiring prematurely. But the move to America helped in finding her motivation again. Looking back, that year was a make or break season for her in terms of her future career. Yeah, I was sick in 2005 with pancreatitis and, and they didn't know if it was stress or um, whether it was, you know, maybe having a little bit too much to drink, would not advise that. Um, you know, all these different factors and, and I had pancreatitis, I was in hospital for a week over the new year and, and I sort of didn't want to get back in the water and there was a lot of times when I didn't get back in the water after that and it, it was very hard for me to get back so coming to, to Florida was, was my be all and end all and, and it was either go to Florida and swim or stay at home and, and not so it was very close to quitting after my illness. The Olympic Games are within touching distance now, and for Gemma Spofforth, it is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to compete in front of her home crowd. Team Great Britain has huge expectations on its shoulders as the entire British Isles are hoping for success come London 2012. Spofforth, who is one of the main favorites to win the 100 and 200 meter backstroke finals, can't wait for the competition to come around, and also knows that the home crowd will give her that extra advantage. 
I mean, obviously, being in the home country is, is huge. I've seen in uh, China in 2008, in Italy in, in uh, 2009, and again last year in China, the home cra crowd really boosts the home countries. And once they get behind them, they really just give them that extra bit of energy just to make them perform just a little bit better. So I think that's what's going to be really great about these Olympics. Gemma Spofforth is no stranger to the Olympic Games as she competed in Beijing in 2008. The Brit, however, only managed to finish fourth in the 100 meter backstroke and ninth in the 200 meter as she tried her best to reach the podium. This time around, though, Spofforth believes she will benefit from that experience and find the Olympics less daunting. The last time around for me it was my first Olympic Games and it was just like being in Disneyland, the, the village and, and everything else was just so overawing and, and it's just really great to sort of see everything. So I think this time it will be nice to sort of know that it can be that good but I can also concentrate at the same time. But obviously I've got to get through trials first which will be in the same pool that Olympics will be in. So that's really my focus at the moment. I haven't really given August too much of a thought and I'm just focusing on March to get through the trials. Whether or not Gemma Spofforth reaches the podium in London remains to be seen. But one thing is certain, if she does, it would mean the world to her. To perform well in front of her countrymen in the British capital is certainly a dream. But for Spofforth, the main objective is to enjoy the moment. I think it would be amazing, but for me this year it's just to enjoy it. That, that really is my, my goal and, and I'm sitting here talking to people about, you know, this is what my, my goals are and this is what I could do in the pool, but outside of the pool is, is kind of my goal really is just to enjoy the sport and, and give back to all the kids that, that support me and, and are inspired by me, so it's really great to have that. Dubai will host the first leg of the FINA Diving World Series 2012. It's the first time that the series comes to the United Arab Emirates and it's sure to offer some spectacular aerial acrobatics as the world's top divers step up their game ahead of the Olympics. The Diving World Series will go on to make stops in Russia, China and Mexico during the spring. All of them top class diving nations with China in particular providing the bulk of the winners. Last year, 28 of the 32 gold medals throughout the season went to Chinese divers. Dominating the women's three-meter springboard was Ti He. Good dive here was secure a spot on the podium. It certainly should be enough to take the title. Her compatriot Chu Bo was among the regulars on the winner's podium in the men's 10-meter platform event. For the 18-year-old, the Chinese dominance is down to national pride and honor. Personally, I feel a sense of responsibility as well as pressure because the 10 meter platform is where the competition is toughest and opponents are strongest. The international divers are strong and I need to take responsibility in the 10 meters and fight along with my teammate Huang Liang. Actually, winning a title isn't the most important thing. I don't want to lose face and I need to win glory for my country. I can lose to a teammate, but not to a foreign diver. Well, one foreigner who's been able to top the Chinese at times is Britain's Tom Daly, who at a mere 15 years of age won the FINA World Championships from the 10 meter platform. Daly is a year younger than his Chinese rival Chu Bo, but you can be sure that he's every bit as ambitious. My greatest opponent in the World Championships would have been Chu Bo. He was, he's an incredible diver and he still is now. He's got the world record. He's, uh, he's a ch the Chinese diver that's just absolutely dominating men's semi-meter platform at the moment. But you just have to try and put pressure on them. And when you put pressure on the Chinese divers, they don't like it. Olympic legend Mark Spitz predicts that his compatriot Michael Phelps will win five gold medals at the London Olympics. Spitz, who himself won two gold medals in Mexico City 1968 and another seven in Munich 1972, told reporters that Phelps was likely to win three individual events and at least two relays for the American team this summer. If Phelps were to match Spitz's prediction, he would have collected an astounding 19 Olympic gold medals, eight of them in Beijing four years ago. Well, that's it for this episode. We'll be back in a month's time with more aquatics action. Until then, thanks for watching. Bye for now.